Haven't even started the video and I'm already sweating. So welcome back. Like always, been a while. Uh, been a little busy. Not necessarily with car stuff, but just work stuff and stuff in general. But anyways, um, car's running great. Been driving it back and forth to work, just having fun with it. Uh, haven't been back to the track yet because uh, I don't feel like it's very safe. Um, I, uh, you know, as you know, I don't have a cage. I want tens. Never put a cage in it. Um, I should have had a cage for 10s. Technically, I should have had a cage for like 11, I think 11.6 is where you need at least a six point cage, uh, a roll bar. Um, 10.9 and anything lower, you should have a uh, 10 point cage. Uh, I have neither. So um, with the car being faster than it was before, uh, the car went 10.6 at 133. Um, and that was at like 504 or something, you know, maybe like 480, 490 horse, whatever. Um, car is now making around 600 horse. Um, it should trap considerably higher. It should potentially be maybe a nine second car, a, a mid to high nine second car. It should definitely trap 140, 145. With that said, um, I, you know, I thought about going back to the track and running it without the cage and maybe just doing like eighth mile, but I know myself too well. If I pulled a really great eighth, and I knew it would go nines, I was gonna go nines, and this is really dangerous without a cage and whatnot. So as you can see, I have purchased uh, a pre-made cage. Got my Kirky down there, all that stuff. Yeah, we're ready to put a cage in the car. Uh, the cage is a um, Rhodes kit. They get really weird mixed reviews. Obviously I haven't found a single review for an Escort, I'm probably like the second or third person to order one for a Escort. I know they did a bunch of the road cages, like road, course type cages because people use the escort for like dirt track and stuff like that so i think a few of those have been used but for the reviews i saw for like the mustangs and stuff like that a bunch of people really didn't really they were like you know the fitment's not great blah blah, blah. you know they were complaining about having to modify it and stuff like that but it says right in the instructions that the top hoop and the a pillar bars and the door bars are not cut to length, they're not notched because um, those are going to depend on the driver position, you know. So because the the main hoop, or the, yeah, the main hoop may be closer or further back depending on where you put your seat. Got a little cat there. Um, so those aren't those aren't notched. So maybe that's what they're complaining about. I don't know. But I decided to go ahead and go with the Rhodes kit because I priced a uh, Dom tubing by itself. And I couldn't buy the tubing and have it shipped to my house cheaper than what I paid for this kit. So, um, and plus I would have had to buy a tube bender and all that stuff. So it's just like, it just made sense to buy the kit. The kit's probably, like I said, I, I really wanted a, a real tight roll cage that was going to be real snug up against, you know, the car. So it wouldn't be in the way, but, you know, I, I didn't want to spend, you know, four or five grand to have someone make a cage for me. Um... It's a lot of money versus the 600 bucks for a kit. So anyways, we got the kit. This will be my first roll cage. Should be interesting. Um, it seems fairly straightforward. It seems fairly straightforward. Uh, we'll see how this goes. So the first step to getting this cage in, well, I guess the second step, the first step is getting the interior out of the car. But before I get the interior completely out of the car, I want to go ahead and get the seat mounted because where the seat is, where the seat ends up being will determine where the cage ultimately ends up going. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to do. So I bought these uh, Kirky brackets off of Summit. And strangely enough, these outer holes line up with the uh, Ford Escort seat bracket. So I got the factory brackets. Wow, almost died. So I got the factory brackets uh, off the seats in here. And uh, 
Yeah, they kind of line up. So, uh, I do need some spacers because these don't sit flush against there. So I'll have to get some hardcore washers, get some grade eight hardware because these are seats. So it is important that they are mounted securely. You don't want to use some crap zinc uh, fasteners. Uh, definitely want to go with uh, something grade eight or higher, something with a really high sear shear strength and uh, largest bolt it'll fit. So I'll see what I got in my scrap pile and uh, see if I can rig something up. And then I'm going to take these brackets to work and uh, sandblast them because they're pretty gross looking. Alright, so uh, mounting the seat got a little convoluted. It seems fairly straightforward. My fault. So the original plan was just to bolt these brackets directly to the seat brackets. They were close, but not close enough. Like, you can make it work if you bent these brackets in really, really far. And I really just didn't like the way that looks. You can see where the factory bolt holes are versus where the brackets are. And it's just, just you know, just enough off that this wasn't really working for me. And I thought about drilling holes in here. As you can see, I drilled holes. And I didn't like how close that hole was to that hole. I didn't want the seat pulling out. So... I built a frame, a adapter frame. Um, the other reason for the adapter frame was the seat was like really, really low. Even at max height, it was kind of like at max height, it didn't leave any room for adjustment. So uh, this at least gives me about an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half height up, you know. And that little, that inch matters, you know. So uh, yeah, this this got this turned into something really super convoluted because. You know, I ended up welding little tubes in there for the bolts so that the tube, the square tube didn't collapse when it was bolted down because I didn't want it like loosening up over time and whatnot. So, yeah, I spent way too much time on it to look as bad as it is and I should probably paint it or something. But, um, I don't know, that, that, that'll be for another day. So, we'll get the seat in the car and, uh, um, get it positioned, and then we can actually pull the dash out and start on the cage. Alright guys, so this has turned out to be a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. seems fairly straightforward. Um, but in, not in ways... Uh, let's see. How, how should I word that? It's more intense than I thought it would be, but not in the way I thought it would be, if that makes any sense. So, fitting up and stuff, that, that's, it's, stuff comes fairly simple to me, or fairly easy to me. It's uh, just the nature, the state of the car is what I didn't realize was going to be so intense. Like, there's so much stuff that needs to be cleaned up, so much wiring that needs to be redone. I wanted to paint the interior, make it real nice, and I'm realizing just how much work that's going to be just to get that, just to get the interior painted. And that's, like, not even with the cage getting done, you know? So it's like, I, don't, I wanted to try and paint the cage before I fully welded it in place so that I could get to the tops of it, but I don't think that's going to be a realistic thing. So, I don't know. Anyways, anyways, um, we've made progress, even though it doesn't look like progress. Um, let me show you what we got going on here. Alright, so if we look inside this mess here, we've got the top hoop um, suspended. Got a ratchet strap and some zip ties. Uh, most places I see when they start with a cage, they start with the rear hoop. Um, which I kind of did, but kind of didn't. So, um, I, I got the seat in place and determined where the rear hoop is going to be, but I haven't started fabbing that up yet, uh, because I decided to work forward back instead of back forward, since that seemed to make more sense to me as far as getting a tight fitment. So, um, like I said, I got the, the, the top hoop, uh, you know, you know, suspended up here, and then I started with the A-pillar bars. So I went ahead and determined where the, oh, I can't see that there. Let's get a better shot. 
So one I had determined, I don't want that stupid bar in the place there. So determined where the A pillar bar is gonna land on the floor. Um, NHRA rule says you should use a six by six plate um, if you're a unibody car. So if it's a frame car, it's gotta be tied to the frame of the car. If it's a unibody car, it should be attached to the floor using six by six plates. Um, either the plates welded to the floor or um, the plates sandwiched to the floor. So you would weld the cage to this plate and then you would bolt it through the floor to another six by six plate, you know, sandwiched to the floor. Um, since this is a 1993 Ford Escort, that floor may as well be tin foil. Um, I don't care how many plates you sandwich, uh, a thick plate welded to thin plate it is still thin plate. So um, in the event that this thing does go upside down, um, I want the cage to be able to support the weight of the car, not just rip through the floorboard and squish me in the process. So um, what any what NHRA suggests doing is tying into the rocker panel of the car, since this is a nice box piece of steel. And so, you know, that's what I did. I went ahead, um, cut this out on a, a plasma CNC, and then just bent it up. So it fits in the corner here. I don't know how well you can see that. Get you in there. So yeah, this plate fits in here real nice. So it'll be welded to the rocker, uh, three points, um, then to the floor. And then I have this plate, probably unnecessary, that will be welded to the front there. Um, the way I got these shapes right was I just used cardboard and just trimmed. There's mathematical ways to do it, but I am a visual kind of guy. Um, I am much better at freehanding stuff than I am at trying to calculate angles and figure that out because it always comes out wrong. So like I said, I took a piece of cardboard, shoved it in there, folded it, cut it, yada yada, and then got the shapes I needed. And that came out pretty perfect, you know, so um, a lot better than I could have got it if I tried, like I said, trying to math it so um obviously these plates aren't perfectly formed so they'll need some mechanical persuasion uh so i figure once they're kind of tacked into place and they're kind of hot well, this one might be a little extreme but you can basically hammer this stuff down you know in places where it's not touching to make it touch and that will be good enough um but anyways that, that will be the plate that will and there's another one on the other side um, but yeah, that would be the plate to that the A pillars will mount to. Uh, I'll probably also do a gusset from here to here, just so that there's more tied into this rocker. Um, the rear isn't going to be as bad because back here the frame rail actually runs right up under this point here. Um, so here's my six by six plate that I bent to fit in this area. Kind of hard to see. But there's whoops there's a little raised area there that's part of the part of the rocker and then the frame is right up under that the um the frame under the car is right up under that and so i think that that this is sufficient you know for that area that plate obviously needs to be formed better because i didn't get the bins right at all but i can rebend it hammer it in place and uh, that'll be that. And then, of course, same thing on the other side. So that'll be for the B pillars. That's where they will mount to. Um, and then I'll probably just, you know, the horizontal bars will just weld into there somewhere or something with another 6x6 plate just to make it legal. Um, then I haven't even gotten to the rear of the car yet. Not there yet. All right. So follow that said. So, yeah, with all that said, uh, we've got the, actually, put you back over here. For the most part, we've got the A-pillar bars figured out. They will go in right about there. Uh, um, probably need to do a little bit extra trimming to get those into place. But as you can see, that's a fairly, well, once it's in the right position, it'll be something like that, you know. Uh, 
So that's not, shouldn't be too bad. Um, got this coped pretty well. I don't know if you can see because it's dark. So I tried using um, one of those fancy uh, angle hole saw doodads. Um, didn't work out for that because it's on a bend, it's on a radius. So um, I ended up using the angle grinder. I just kind of cut it to where it was close enough held it up there, looked at it, saw what it looked like, and then just started trimming with the angle grinder, just a um, little flap disc. I just, yeah, you know, we just put it up there, say, all right, well, it needs to turn in a little bit, so I grind a little more out of the inside, try again, grind a little more on the outside until it basically fits. Um, I don't know how symmetrical this is gonna be from left to right. I think it'll look good when you eyeball it. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but it will be, it'll be sturdy and it will look symmetrical at least following the A-pillars and whatnot. So, so now that that, the A-pillars are basically figured out here, and I basically, you know, I've done the same thing on the other side. Um, so we've got that figured out. So now I can go ahead, I can trim the top hoop to accept the rear hoop in the back. So that needs to get done. All right, we're making some progress here. So um, right now, this bar is obviously, it's just sitting here, it's zip tied in place. Um, top bar is also zip tied and ratchet strapped into place, but the top hoop is notched. Um, both sides need to be cleaned up because I couldn't get the angle right on the ground. Um, but these bars look pretty good. You know, that's a pretty good, good notcheroo there. Be about the angle there. May suck this in a little more closer to the side there. Um, these plates are prepped and ready. I think I'm going to weld them on the bench. Um, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Originally I was going to maybe weld them into place, like on the floor, and then weld the plate on top, you know? But I think I might just weld them, like, on the bench, and then hammer them into place, you know? Form them, shape them to fit the floor. That might be easier in the long run. So, so I haven't decided quite yet, but yeah, making some progress. Hey guys, so yeah, this has been kind of a freaking nightmare. It um, seems fairly straightforward. I am not as skilled of a welder as I thought I was. Um, the part I've had the most trouble with is getting the floor plates in. I ended up uh, using some flux core MIG because it's all I had. I didn't have any. Um, well, I have straight wire MIG, but I didn't have any uh, gas for MIG. All I have is pure argon. I'm um, trying to TIG the floor plates, which is nearly impossible for me because I couldn't bend myself into the positions I need to be in. And um, I don't have the pedal control, especially when I'm upside down and whatnot, to keep from blowing through the floor. So I MIG'd it. Uh, the MIG wire I had was really old, and I probably shouldn't have used it, and it came up really cruddy. And so I did go buy new wire and then weld over it. And it just looks freaking horrible. But I'm not even going to show them to you because they, they look pretty bad. But um, I moved on with the other parts of the cage. Uh, so I'm working on getting the A-pillar bars in right now. They're both tacked into place. Um, the C-pillar bar is just kind of zip-tied into place. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do now is move this out of the way and I'm going to remove this strap here. Whoops, there we go. So I'm going to remove this, uh, this strap here and this way I can drop the main hoop and the A-pillar bars down and I can weld these A-pillar bars um, completely to the loop then put them back up and then I can weld the main hoop to the C-pillar hoop and uh, I can work on cutting the door bars and yada 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 and all the other stuff that I'm way behind on. So, all right, uh, I'll just um, 
Yeah. That's what happens when you get really angry trying to notch something to get it to fit in the right position and then you realize that you were not notching in the right orientation. So now I have a big old giant hole there. That's gonna... All right, so we got the uh, A-pillars on. I'm doing the crossbar right now, uh, getting that welded on. Um, like I said, fairly simple to get to um, by doing the crossbars first, because then you can just tilt the whole thing forward, you know, or not the crossbars, doing the A-pillars first and then, you know, to the top hoop. Then you can drop the whole top hoop and the A-pillars and then you can get to those welds. Um, so I'm taking care of these welds, getting those done, completed. And once that's done, I need to grind the bottom of these a little bit. I should have did that beforehand, but apparently they're not straight, so they're not flat against the plates. I could fill it in, but I'd rather them be flush and then welded. Um, then I'll work on fitting up the back hoop. Then we'll do the door bars and keep going, going, going. Uh, just about the right angle there. Just gotta do the other side and it should be good. Alright, so went ahead and made up these brackets, uh, drew them up in Fusion 360 and cut them out on a uh, CNC plasma. And just put a little 90 degree bend. Uh, basically, just took the cardboard template, measured all the angles and whatnot and distances, and uh, came up with these guys. So, this is what will hold the uh, steering wheel. To the frame or to the cage. So, um, I need to get that put together. Then there's a uh, just a little bracket. Not really necessary, um, but figure why not. Um, this is where the factory um, dash bar bolts to. So, made these little brackets that will bolt on there, well to the cage. Uh, not so much for making the cage stronger, more so for making sure the car retains its rigidity across here. You know, so. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tack those up. Uh, I got the door bars, or arm bars, um, notched and everything. So I still need to weld the, this side of the car to the plates and everything, and... Yeah, so we're making some progress. We're getting there.
Alright guys, so we've made quite a bit of progress. Battery's about to die in the camera. Uh, got the floor rhino lined, or rhino lined, uh, T Rex. God damn it. That's what happens when you get old. Raptor lined. Uh, the, yeah. So the floor's been raptor lined. Came out pretty dang snazzy. Uh, basically, at this point, I'm just getting everything back in the car, getting things wired up. Gonna give the car a test fire, make sure I got everything wired up correctly. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and sand or yeah, abrate whatever this cage and get it painted because um, I was gonna wait but it's already starting to rust in all the areas where I had to grind off the um, the scale so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that painted then we're just about ready man we're almost there and of course I gotta refit the dash and everything but you know details details